Hey guys, welcome back. And as you guys already know, we're working on Audacity. We're taking a look at some effects, so let's go ahead and continue. So the next effect that we have right here is actually Leveler. And what this is actually, uh, what it actually is, is basically a combined compressor and limiter. Uh, so what it does, it actually reduces the dynamic range of any audio. Uh, and you have a, actually you have a, a few different options right here. So you can decide how how much you want to actually level it down by and um, I guess the threshold for the noise uh, so let's go ahead and take a quick preview and hear how it sounds okay so that was a moderate setting I don't know if you can really uh, tell the difference from earlier let's go ahead and um, make a more drastic uh, change and see if that you know, you can notice a difference at this at this point. As you can see right here, uh, it actually looked like the wave file actually got a lot lot bigger. Uh, so you could probably tell that there was a dynamic change right away. Uh, I'll hit play so you can hear it. So obviously that was much much louder. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this back to the way it was. There it is. Now let's go ahead and go to our next effect, which is the noise remover. Now what the noise remover actually is, it actually removes constant background noise such as, you know, fans or tape noise or hums. So it's not going to really work very well with any talking or music in the background. So it's, it's kind of limited, but what it does do, it, it does reduce uh, background noise. You're not going to notice any difference here because these are all recorded very cleanly. So uh, you're not going to hear any uh, noise reduction. So we're just going to move on to the next uh, effect. Now the next one is normalize. Now with normalize, essentially what you do is you use normalize to set the maximum amplitude of a tract. So essentially this right here, this will be what your track will end up at the end. This is how much headroom you'll have. So if you did this, your your song or your track will be um, zero decibel loud, loud, which is pretty pretty loud, and that's when you're peaking. It's not a good thing. Uh, if you want to create more headroom, what you could do is you could do like negative three or negative four, and that's actually what's suitable when you're going to send that music over to somebody else for mixing and for mastering. Uh, so this is actually very handy and um, you probably would want to use it before you send it into another uh, program such as Logic or Pro Tools. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next uh, effect. Uh, the next one is actually Nyquist Prompt. Now what this actually is, it's it's for third-party plugins, and if you're a developer of plugins yourself, if you made any uh, plugins and they have a problem with it, you can actually enter in your command and debug it right here. So that's what this is all about, uh, which most of us aren't going to really be using it. I know for sure I'm not creating any plugins, so I don't use it at all. Let's go ahead and move on to our next effect, which is pulse stretch. Now what pulse stretch is, is basically another one of these time stretching um, I guess effects that's a little bit different because th this will actually stretch things to the extreme without um, really affecting the pitch too much. Now it actually it depends on how extreme you go. Um, right here it says stretch factor 10. We can go ahead and take a listen and see how it sounds. I think this is a lot so uh, you're, you're probably going to notice a difference. It's going to sound pretty different. <laughs> So it's been stretched out a lot, and so it sounds pretty weird. But at the same time, it depends on uh, what you're looking for. It's a pretty fun effect to use, obviously. So let's go ahead and move on to our next effect. Now, the next one is a phaser. Now, what a phaser, the reason why it's called a phaser is because it basically is a phase shifter. And what it does, it basically combines two phase sifted, sifted signals, pardon me, with the original. So it's splitting off these signals and sending it through uh, something called an LFO, which are these right here, uh, and they're low frequency oscillators. And this is what basically creates the, the phasing sound. So you're basically sending 
um, this sound, you're splitting it and you're oscillating it um, with these with these options right here. So let's go ahead and take a listen to how this sounds. So basically you have the, the, the signal right there and it's split off and it's slightly out of phase and you're using the low frequency oscillator to kind of create dips and notches in the sound. So uh, that's how you use this one right here. And it's a, it's a very interesting effect. It's a pretty common effect. Let's go ahead and move on to our next one. Now repair, th this one's a little bit different. Uh, as it says right here, it says message. The repair effect is intended to be used on various short sections uh, of audio up to 128 samples. So this is for very, very small sections of audio that have some damage that can be repaired with this specific tool. Uh, so this could be like anything like a hum or a pop or maybe like a slight warp sound of a tape or something like that if you're uh, recording off of something um, like a WAV file that originally came from a tape or something like that if you're using a sample. Um, you can go ahead and effectively you know, remove that sound and, and repair it uh, using this tool right here. Uh, again, uh, this re these recordings are actually done pretty well, uh, so you're not gonna, we're not gonna see any uh, difference at all. And I think uh, the selection size that we have is not gonna allow us to do it anyways. It's only 128 samples. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and move on to our next effect. But that's basically what it's used for. Now let's take a look right here. Now repeat, this one's a little different. What this does is, it, let's say uh, this section right here that I have selected, if I wanted to go ahead and um, have it repeat over several times, I could just punch in a number right here if I wanted to repeat once or if I wanted to repeat like four times, it would. So let's go ahead and um, actually once would even once would be even long. So let's go ahead and hear how that sounds. It'll just repeat the same section twice. Actually, let's try one more time. I think I only selected it once, so I just repeated it just the one time. Let's go ahead and give it a go. You know what? It might be doing that because um, the previous section is kind of small, but uh, and the selection is too long. Uh, it's longer than the four seconds or five seconds that the preview allows. But essentially, it's just going to repeat that section over and over, kind of like a loop. Uh, let's go ahead and hit cancel, and we'll just move on to our next effect. Now reverse is pretty easy to understand. It's just going to get the signal, whatever signal or track that you have in there, whatever WAV file or information that you have right here, it's just going to reverse it, which is pretty fun. Uh, let's go ahead and hear how that sounds. So you could see I had that selection uh, set up right there, and uh, let's take a look at that wave file real quick, or that wave track, and um, you'll see that it reversed it, and then right here, after it was that segment that I selected, it right here where you see this break, um, it went back to regular uh, forward plane, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and deselect that, uh, we'll, and we'll try another effect. Now this sliding time scale slash pitch shift. Now this one's a little different. What this does, it kind of gives you uh, the ability to tempo change without affecting pitch, or you could decide to affect pitch and you could decide exactly how much is that gonna change. And you could see right here, um, you have these sliders right here, and you can decide exactly how much, how drastic or how subtle you want it, you know? So let's go ahead and give this a try and, and just, uh, hear how that sounds. So it takes a little time for it to process it. We'll go back, we'll move this back a little bit. And hit play. <laughs> So it definitely changed the tempo uh, right there. It, I think it did change the pitch a little bit right there as well. Um, 
but obviously it made everything else sound kind of weird. Everything was uh, basically out of place uh, and it wasn't synced up right. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch that back. And it's best if you use an effect like this, either only on a single track uh, when it's just playing by itself, you want a tempo change or you select this over many tracks and change a bunch of tracks at once or else you're going to have an entire mess. Uh, let's go ahead and undo that and we'll move on to our next effect. Now tur tourniquet silence, uh, this one's a little different. What this does, it automatically tries to find and eliminate audible silences. Uh, so wh what you want to avoid using are faded audios. Uh, so let's see if let's say if you um, had a fade in the beginning and you want to use this feature, um, you you probably don't want to use uh, this feature after you do the fade. You want to do this before you fade uh, because then you're going to run into a lot of problems. But essentially what it does, again, it automatically tries to find and eliminate audible silences. Uh, so it's a very interesting tool. Obviously you have a minimal, minimum silence duration, a maximum silence duration. Uh, you have your silence compression. So it's a four to one or whatever number you decide to choose. And then the threshold for silence. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a quick preview. So not, not too big of a change, and that's because there wasn't really any silent moments um, part of that song or that little uh, region that we did right there. So you're not going to really notice too big of a difference. But if there was silence in between, you would notice, um, I guess, it dipping in and out a bit. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, move on to our next effect, which is uh, the wah-wah. Now what this does, it using these uh, low-frequency oscillators right here, what it does, it actually... Uh, gives you variations in the tone. So it's going to basically sound like the regular wah-wah pedal from like the 1960s, 1970s. Uh, you're pretty familiar uh, probably. Uh, if you listen to any rock and roll, you probably heard the wah-wah, especially uh, made famous by Jimi Hendrix. So let's go ahead and give it a quick preview and hear how it sounds. <laughs> So that sounded pretty interesting as um, if you were wearing headphones or if you had a, a good, if you're listening to this uh, on, on monitors, you can hear the sound actually um, moving a little bit left to right a bit too. So, uh, you know, this is a pretty fun tool to use. Uh, let's go ahead and hit cancel. And the rest of these effects, now these, these effects right here that you see right here, um, you might not have these effects, so I don't really want to explain them, especially if you're using a PC. And uh, these effects right here obviously are uh, plug-in effects uh, from you know things that I purchased in the past. So you might not have some of these. Uh, so I'm not going to go over explaining uh, these ones since uh, obviously it's not part of this package right here. So as you can see, uh, the line stops right here. And these are the additional effects that I just have. Um, so if you use Apple, or if you're on a Mac computer, you might have some of these. If you're on PC, you might have some other different things, and I don't have them, so I wouldn't be able to really just demonstrate them at all anyways. So that's pretty much it for the mix video. Uh, the next videos are going to be really interesting. You're going to be learning some interesting things that you need to know before you start mixing, and of course you guys are going to get your mix project. So I'll catch you guys a little bit later. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're watching this video and you're not currently enrolled to the Recording Connection, this is only a small taste of what you could be learning in our program. The Recording Connection provides all of our students with industry standard software, like Pro Tools, to take your engineering skills to the next level. We also provide books with excellent lesson plans, a professional studio engineer who will mentor you and show you how to operate real studio equipment, and so much more. With the Recording Connection, getting finance is a breeze. We have many different tuition options, so getting hooked up at a studio near you is fast and easy. For more information, check out www.recordingconnection.com. And of course, I'll catch you guys on the next video.